that way we're going to have a whole system and it's just going to be, it's just going to be a better experience. And ultimately it's going to be more effective for you. So welcome. Today's workout is glutes, chest, and triceps, which I'm super, super excited about. We're gonna be doing lower body exercises, specifically focusing in on the glutes. Some of them are the Glutes Project inspired, and some of them are just some of my other favorite glute exercises. You're going to need a circle hip band, a handled resistance band, and a set of dumbbells. You're definitely gonna want one dumbbell that's a bit heavier because we're gonna be doing a plie squat. And then you're gonna need some lighter and moderate weight dumbbells. Whatever you have, grab them. And if you don't have much equipment, don't worry because I will provide modifications. Again, if this is your first time here, please use the chat box and let me know. <clears throat> um, hi, Jennifer from PA. So good to have you. Hi, Robin Stevens. So good to have you guys. Um, and so, hold on, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Uh, so if you are new, let me know. Here's how we are going to do it. We're going to be working in supersets. Two exercises put together with no rest in between. Then we will take rest, okay? Um, we will be doing, <clears throat> I will be doing two sets of each superset. If you want a harder workout today, you're going to do three supersets. You're going to work faster. You're going to do more repetitions, more sets, and move faster, take shorter rest. If you need a gentler workout than what I'm providing today, you're going to take your time, take a break whenever you want, focus on body weight only, move a bit slower, and do fewer repetitions. The name of the game is that you are working about 20% harder today than where you are today. So if you're feeling a little sluggish, you're gonna push yourself 20% beyond that. If you're feeling super energetic, you're gonna push yourself 20% beyond that. That's the name of the game because every day and every workout is a bit different and this formula always works if you keep it in reference to where you are today. So with that being said, let's get started. We're gonna go through a little bit of a preparatory sequence just to make sure that your body is fully ready for the workout. It's to get your heart rate going. It's to shift your metabolism. What? Blue? Um, I could probably back at the end of the hallway. <clears throat> Try the end of the hallway. We have a missing dog. Um, <clears throat> the point of a warm up is not to warm you up. It's to prepare your body and to shift you from resting metabolism to workout metabolism. And that is what we are gonna be doing today. So let's start with your feet separated. <clears throat> Take a big inhale up, exhale it out and do that two more times for me. I wanna adjust my camera a little bit more guys. <clears throat> big inhale up, exhale it out. Really give yourself some good oxygen and a bit of a stretch throughout your body. And let's go one more, ah, much better. <clears throat> and exhale it out. Now, left hand up over your head, actively reach up, take a slight lean using your right hand to support you, lifting up and out. Once you're there, I want you to rotate and look under that arm. So if you've got your left hand over your head, you're gonna rotate and look under your left arm <clears throat> while you simultaneously lift and lengthen up. You're gonna get a great stretch through the front corner panel and also through your back just to open it up and to activate that transverse abdominus. Relax, same on the other side, right hand up, lengthen up, hand on the thigh, lift and lengthen, slight lean and rotate and look under that arm to just bring a nice, awesome stretch to get us moving and waking that body up. Oh, does that feel so good? And relax it out. Keep your feet separated. Bring your hands to your thighs. And I want you to come to a little bit of an arch in your lower back. And now I want you to round your lower back. Let's do this a handful of times. Arch your back, activating the muscles. Roll your back, stretching the muscles of your back and activating your abs. Activate the muscles of your back with an arch. Activate the muscles of your core with a tuck. And again, arch, activating those muscles. Tuck, activating your, your front muscles, your abdomen and your core. 
open, activating your back, exaggerating the arch, contract forward, two more, <clears throat> open, exaggerating that arch. I'm doing that intentionally and contract. And one more time, really stick that booty back, get yourself a good arch right here. It's super valuable and tuck and relax. Come up, keep your feet separated and let's come in for a spinal twist. Just letting your arms swing around your body. Just let them go, letting your spine rotate, releasing some tension throughout your spine. And imagine that you're trying to look all the way over behind you while you simultaneously anchor down by contracting your butt on the leg that you're turning away from. So you're going to contract left butt, right butt, left butt, right butt. Activate that little butt cheek because that's gonna anchor down and give you the foundation to rotate around. So good to open up all of your rotational muscles. It's just a great way to get warmed up. <clears throat> and one more and relax. Bring your feet together, knees are soft, slight bend, find your balance onto one leg, let it settle in. Make sure that you're keeping that leg slightly bent. Okay, draw in through your abdomen, use your hands for support. And I want you to look from left to right around your surroundings, looking at all of the different things that come into your eye line. It's going to throw your balance off. That's the whole point of this exercise. Knee is bent so that the ankle is also flexed and you're looking around. Now, let's open this up. I want you to look up. Look down, look all around, look everywhere. And I want your balance to get thrown off. Now, I'm probably not a super great example of that because my balance is pretty good, but most of you are probably wobbling around in space, trying to catch your balance. That is the whole point of this exercise. I know it looks completely ridiculous, <laughs> but it is one of the best exercises that you could possibly do and relax, switch sides. And I know you feel it, right? So simply by doing it, you can feel how valuable it is. Other leg, start with left to right. And so what's happening here, provided you keep a bend in that knee, very, let me show you this way, very important to keep a bend at the hip, at the knee and at the ankle, because that is what fires up all of the muscles from your core all the way down to your toes. And it wakes up what we call synergistic muscles to help really stabilize the leg. It's also great for your balance, but it's an incredible way to warm up each leg independently while we are working on your functional balance. Do this exercise every single day and your life will change, especially if you have foot and ankle issues. Such a great way to strengthen the arches of your feet, improve the health of the foot and the biomechanics of your entire leg. And relax. Feet together, I want you to reach way up, step back into a partial lunge. Other leg, so we're gonna alternate legs coming into a partial lunge here. Just to warm up, using your hands on your front leg, to take you back into that partial lunge. We're gonna make it bigger in a moment, but this is also some foreshadowing to an exercise later on in the workout. Actively reach, don't just lift your arms up. This isn't just a yay. You are actively pressing your hands up as high as you can to the ceiling. We're gonna make it bigger. Now you can stay here if this is challenging enough for you, or let's drop it all the way down and stand. Big lunge, stand. Drive into the heel of the front foot so that we can warm up the glute of that leg. Driving into your front heel, letting your back knee release to the ground, opening up that hip flexor. So when you step back here, that leg that's stepping back 
gets an incredible active and dynamic stretch of the hip flexor. And we need that to undo any sitting that you might've done this week. Do you do a little bit of sitting? I think we all do a lot of sitting these days. Big reach, getting your heart rate up as well. Such a good exercise. One more and feet separated. Feet are truly parallel to each other. Keep them that way. Knees soft, booty back, and let's go side to side. Coming into our side lunge, two, fire up the glutes, wake up the hamstrings, bring an active and dynamic stretch to the inner thigh. Sit deeper, if that feels good for you, coming all the way down, sitting as deeply as you possibly can. Every four or five reps, take a look at your feet. Are they staying parallel or are your toes migrating open? Keep your feet truly parallel unless you feel acute pain or discomfort in your knees. If you do, you can then turn your toes open a little tiny bit just to relieve, but this is actually healthier on your knees than turning your toes open. Sit deep, firing up the hips and the glutes, and also preparing your knees for the workout. A couple more. And relax, we've got one more preparatory exercise. Bring your weight onto one leg, knee is bent. From here, sit into that leg, bend over, touch the ground. Tap for balance. Sit into a quarter squat. Tap the floor. Balance. Sit into a quarter squat. Tap the floor and balance. Continue. Make sure that you're really exaggerating that sit into a quarter squat. Holy cow. It's a single leg squat. And holy moly, when you get this phase here, when you really get that, take a look at what kind of awesomeness gets fired up on that right leg. Your ankle, your foot, your knee, your glutes, your abs, it's a single leg squat, but we're also getting a little bit of a dynamic stretch on the hamstrings. Let's do two more, please continue. And switch sides. Same thing on the other side. Start with that knee bent first. It's actually super important. On your left leg, sit and bend. Tap down and stabilize. Sit, stabilize. Now you can add to this by activating the glute at the top. So if you've been with me for a while, you know I'm all about finishing off a movement by ensuring that the hip gets fully opened here. So really squeeze your glutey, dear glutey gang members, right here. Open up that hip, squeeze your glutey right there. If you're new to the workout and you're like, what is she talking about? When we first started this exercise group, there was a day where my brain malfunctioned and I wanted to say glutes and I wanted to say booty, and I say glutey. And so we are the official glutey gang. Two more here, guys. Make sure you start it with a quarter squat. Quarter squat and squeeze. Let's get into the workout. Grab yourself a circle band. First two exercises. <clears throat> Lateral band step, 15. Reverse, 15. Second exercise with your band. Yeah. Hello, hello. Second exercise is going to be a glute kickback. Okay. Hold on, let me mute everybody. 
Every now and then someone likes to chime in my ear to just communicate with me. So I'm always on the lookout just in case we're having technology problems. So band, circle band, step in. Then the easiest way to get into it is to stretch your band, step through and place it. Adjust it slightly above your knees. And we've got lateral band step, 15, 15. Start with your feet together, quarter squat, booty back, arch in your lower back. Here is your position. Not here, guys. Not here. Here. Not here. Here. Arch your lower back. Give me that booty pop. And let's begin. Quarter squat. You're sitting into it. Sit into it. Now, your band should be short enough, tight enough that you can step fully together and keep a bit of tension on the band. So if you can't fully step together without losing tension on your band, I encourage you to consider getting a new band in the future. Because really you do want it to hold tension as you're stepping together. Reverse, 15 in each direction. As the set continues, there's gonna be a tendency to stand upright. Reset, quarter squat, sit down. Little arch in your back so that your glutes are popping back. That's the positioning that we want here. Heavy on the heels, leading, keeping your feet truly parallel. Feet stay parallel, okay? Truly, truly, truly parallel. 15 each direction. Second exercise is a glute kickback. No rest, feet together, knees bent, kick back and relax. If you wanna use something to stabilize yourself here, please do so. 15 on each leg, 15 on each leg. You can move faster or slower than me, but I really wanna make sure that here, you're getting a legit big contraction. I don't wanna see this. Okay, that does nothing for your glutes. And remember, today's workout is glutes, chest, and triceps. So this is all about your glutes. Make sure here you're really able to squeeze, activate, and contract your glutes at the greatest point of contraction, which is here. 15, and let's switch sides going right into that other side. Listen, it's absolutely okay to hold on to something to stabilize you. In fact, if you're more advanced and your band is heavy, you're going to need it for leverage. So the harder you're working, you've got to have something that you can stabilize yourself against to really generate all the force on the band. Now, if I went to my next blue band, I use the spry bands. The next one is blue, the harder one is blue. If I had on my blue band, I would have to leverage myself, okay? But with this red band, I'm able to come to a full stop. I've also got the balance and the coordination and the years of experience doing it. So my point is to say, if you need to stabilize, it's not cheating. I just don't really have anything to stabilize with and I don't really need it. Squeeze that glute, 15. Those of you that want a harder workout, no rest. Immediately go right into your next set of lateral lunges. The rest of us are gonna take about a 20 second rest. And then we'll go back in for our second round of supersets. And if you popped in late, please say hello. If this is your first time in the workout, we've got new people joining the workout every week, which I love. This gang is growing bigger and stronger every single week. So if you're new, please use the chat box at some point and just let me know that you're here. Um, because I love to keep an eye on my new friends. Um, okay, you guys ready for our second set? Same thing, if your first set was easy, grab your blue band. Feet together, partial squat, booty back. You guys, I messed this up for years as recent as six years ago. I used to come to here with a flat back, right? That old saying, flat back, no, no, no. 
arched back, arched back, keep your chest lifted, step from here, got it? 15, each direction, lead with your heel, stay low. For those of you that this is a hard exercise, welcome to the club, I know. I remember distinctly a day in Los Angeles about six years, no, it wasn't that long ago. It might've been four years ago, four to five years ago. I was doing this exercise and it was so hard. Oh my gosh, it was so hard when I did it the right way, when I got my pelvis into position, when I got that lower back arch, when I sat down into a partial squat, I will never forget it. I was at LA Fitness in Mid Wilshire in Los Angeles. It's a terrible gym. I hope they went out of business because they should. Such bad management, so irresponsible, terrible people. I could go on and on and on. Oh, they made me so mad. But that day, I'll never forget, I did this for the first time and I was like, shit, that's a lot harder. So much harder. It should be hard. 15 each direction and your glutes should be burning at this point and relax. If they're not on fire, you need to sit deeper or get a heavier band or do more reps. Feet together, kick back. Second set is the sweet set. Second set is where all the good stuff happens. Okay, second set is where your muscles are firing and now it feels good, right? You can generate more force because the muscle is fully awake and active. It takes a set. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes into a workout for your muscles to really get going and to really start firing and activating fully. So second set is usually the one that feels really, 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 really good. Third set, the fatigue starts to set in. So for those of you guys that do three supersets in these workouts, you'll notice the third set's where you got to dig in just a little bit more. And if that's not the case, we need to challenge you a little bit more because your second and third set should be challenging. First set, you should kind of feel like you're getting into your groove and you're mostly able to keep good technique. One more, same thing on the other side, both legs. Squeeze that glute, squeeze it. Try to keep your pelvis stable. I want you kicking back as far as you can. Really, you're technically kicking upward. So I want you to kick back and up as much as you possibly can without changing this angle much. See, this angle pretty much is staying here. I'm not moving, follow, right? The only thing that's moving is your leg. Your hips don't move. Hips don't move. Midsection doesn't change. Squeeze that glutey like it's your job, because it is. Three more here, and then we're gonna take a short break. Those of you doing three supersets, hop to it. One more, short break, you can remove your band. Next superset, plie squat with a heavier weight load. Please grab that now. Then we'll be going into reverse lunge with a knee up. Let me show you the two moves so that if you want to get ahead of me, you can. Plie squat, your toes are turned open, not fully, but almost. So if you look down and you look at your left foot, it's almost to 90 degrees from your front, but not completely. I would say we're at about 70 degrees, okay? But that's important. Feet are wide, toes are open, knees open way out and press back behind you. Plie squat, squeeze your glutes at the top. Second exercise, with or without dumbbells, it's up to you. Second exercise, feet together, reverse lunge, tap, knee lift, tap, reverse lunge, or your ultimate goal is lunge, knee lift, lunge, knee lift. Some of you will need support for balance, so, You'll tap, knee lift, tap, lunge. Tap down as you need to for balance, but the whole goal is to lunge and swing through on your knee up, squeeze like bonkers. 
in the booty. Second superset, let's begin. Grab your heavier weight load, plie squat first. Toes are open, heels are wider than normal. Knees are soft, all the way down, come up, squeeze your glutes. Tuck your pelvis, really squeeze your glutes at the top. Drive into your heels, pressurize your heels throughout the move. Nothing on your toes, nothing. Keep those little toes totally relaxed, no pressure, no gripping. Everything, your life is in your heels. Grip like crazy with your heels. And at the bottom, press your knees back behind you, back behind you. So imagine if you had a wall behind you, at the bottom, your knees are trying to press back to the wall. Imagine that, press your knees back to the wall. 15, and let's go to those reverse lunges. Heidi, you wanna be my counter today? I'm gonna to follow you for reps, okay? I can see you, you're front and center. The pressure's on, girl. Okay, guys, reverse lunge. Feet together, knees soft, dumbbells or not. Totally up to you. Here we go. Reverse, knee lift, that's one. Here's two for 15, and then we will do 15 on the other leg. Listen, this is one of those exercises that's pretty complicated and tends to highlight any issues that you want to focus on. So if balance is an issue for you, this is gonna be hard and therefore modify it if you need to. If your cardiovascular ability is what you need to work on, you're gonna feel it because your heart rate's gonna get up, okay? And if your glutes are weak, you're gonna feel it because they're gonna get tired. Same thing on the other side, going right into that other side. No rest, coming to check in on you guys. 15 on that other leg. You're also gonna notice one leg is quote unquote better than the other. So that's also feedback to know which leg needs a little more love. So this leg right here for me is a leg that I injured a hamstring years ago when I was a runner. The truth is I was overstretching and I very severely tore a hamstring, semitendinosus to be exact, and it's plagued me ever since. So when I do this exercise, it's a lot more complicated. I have to think about it a whole lot more, but that highlights what I need to work on and the opportunity to get better, right? So remember that if you have one of those moments where you're like, oh, I suck at this exercise. Nope, this is a hard exercise. And it just means there's some things to focus on and work on. Short break, then we're gonna do a second set. So good to see you guys. Diane, Elsa, hello. Emmy, Leslie. I love it, Leslie and her Wonder Woman blue leggings. I love it. Adelia, Katrina, I'll talk to you later. So good to see you guys. Short break. And now we're gonna go back in for that second set. This set's gonna get your heart rate up a bit, depending on your fitness level. At this point, you should have a little bit of a sweat going. Let's go for second set, plie squats. Ready? Toes are open. Give yourself the gift of a heavier dumbbell. And let's really work it here. Drive into your heels, squeeze your glutes, fully standing up, pressing those knees back in space. Super, super, super important. Keep your abdomen contracted inward so that you're really bracing into your abs. As best you can, 
try to keep your chest mostly upright, mostly. You are gonna bend over a little depending on how deep you're able to go based on how long your legs are, based on how long your arms are, based on your flexibility, lots of different things. But even if you do kind of bend forward a little at the bottom, energetically keep your chest lifted, keep it upward. So even when we're going down, your energy is still up. Grab your dumbbells for reverse lunge knee lift or go body weight only, whatever is right for you. Feet together, knees bent, here we go. Re oh, other leg, sorry. Reverse knee lift, okay? Now you can also use something at your side for balance and leverage if you'd like. If you have a chair or a door jam, something, anything to really be able to use it for support here, that's absolutely okay. And if this exercise feels hard, you can use your hands on your front leg to support you during the lunge here. And if it's a piece of cake, grab yourself some dumbbells. I really like dumbbells at the shoulders for this exercise, but you can certainly hang them at your sides if that's better for you. All right, second set. I saw something on Instagram yesterday from a fellow fitness expert that made me chuckle. She also does live workouts like this. And she made a comment like, I'm not one of those instructors that leads a silent workout. I talk all throughout it. As you guys know, so do I. But there's also a little secret in, in my industry. When you have an instructor like me who doesn't talk a lot in the workout, it's because they don't want you to hear that they're breathless, right? Because I'm not supposed to be out of breath from this workout is the idea. It's actually not true. Another reason why performers like Beyonce are so impressive because to dance around and perform physical movement and speak without being breathless is a major, 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 major skill. And I was just like, girl, I hear ya. The truth is your heart rate should be up. You should be a bit breathless on an exercise like that. Short break. Let me show you the next two exercises. Do me a favor, walk it out. When you get done with that last reverse lunge, please walk out in space for 20 to 30 seconds. We're going down onto the ground and I don't want you to go right down to the ground if your heart rate is elevated. Alternatively, lift your knees in place to bring your heart rate down a little, just a little. Then we're gonna go down to the ground. Listen up. First exercise is from the Glutes Project to Activate. It's the prone leg lift. You can do this body weight only. You could do it with ankle weights or a band. Pick your tool. I'll show you all the options. Let me show you the two exercises in this superset. First exercise, prone leg lift with or without resistance. Forehead on your arms. We're gonna lift on one leg, 15 reps. Same thing on the other leg, 15 reps. That's your first exercise. I will do my first one with a band to show you how. If you have ankle weights, strap them on now, please. Second exercise. You're gonna want a heavier dumbbell. It's glute bridge. If you have an exercise bench at home, please turn this into a hip thrust. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it with a chair in a moment, but I know the majority of you are gonna do it from the ground, so we're gonna do it here. Dumbbell below your hip bones, so that at the top, the dumbbell is just below your pubic bone. It sits right at the tippy top of your thighs. Relax down, hip, um, sorry, glute bridge here, glute bridge here, glute bridge here. And if you've got a bench or a chair, you're gonna turn it into a hip thrust. 
I will show you when we get into the exercise. Let's begin. So um, put your ankle weights on if you have them. I'm gonna do this first set with a resistance band just to show you what it could look like with a resistance band. Resistance band low at your ankles. You're gonna lay down on your tummy. Hold on, I wanna adjust my camera so you can see me a little better. Lay down on your tummy. And this at your ankles, or you've got your ankle weight. Cross your arms. Forehead is resting on your arms. Forehead here. Toes are pointed, and let's lift and relax. Lift and relax. 15 on each leg. We will do one set, and then we'll immediately go to the other leg. Okay, 15, we're not alternating. And if you're doing this with a resistance band, a lighter resistance band actually works better because you have to counterbalance with that foot that stays on the ground. So you have to anchor downward with the foot that's on the floor. So technically a lighter band really works a little better on this exercise because you can go a bit higher and you can get a bit more glute activation. So remember today's workout is glutes. And then next we're gonna hit chest and triceps. And so for this exercise, I really want you feeling the majority of it in your glute. If you're feeling it in your hamstring, go ahead and get rid of your resistance band and do it body weight only. Other leg, same thing. The height of your leg lift is going to depend on the length of your resistance band, the strength of your glute, okay? And just the overall functionality of how you perform this exercise. The resistance band really does change what it looks like. Now, it doesn't matter, even if you're not lifting super high, you can get a super, super big glute activation here at the top. Give yourself a beat at the top to really contract, to really squeeze that glute. Give yourself that gift so that you're really activating, getting the full contraction in the glute, really reinforcing that mind-body connection. 15 reps and relax. If you've got a band, you can keep it or remove it. It's totally up to you. Flip over onto your back for glute bridge. Grab your resistance band, sorry, grab a dumbbell for glute bridge. I'm gonna get a chair and demonstrate to you guys how to do this exercise with a chair. If you have a exercise bench, please use your exercise bench, okay? Now doing this exercise, doing a hip thrust from a chair is a bit awkward, but once you get the hang of it, it works great. All right, everybody into position. If you're doing it from a chair, you've got the chair right about at your bra strap, and then you press down on the front two legs of the chair and we've got hip thrust. 15 reps, okay? 15 reps. So now if you just did your prone leg lift with a band, you can just slide your band up around your knees and perform this exercise here. If you've got a uh, exercise bench, it's a whole lot easier to put weight across your hips if you want. And you can stay down in that hip thrust, just staying on the ground if you want to, okay? Tucking your hips back and tucking your hips under. 15 reps and two more. Then we're gonna take a short break unless you're doing three supersets. If you're doing three supersets, Go for it. Go ahead and get started. Second set here. I'm going to pretend that I've got my ankle weights on so that I can kind of demonstrate this like the rest of you that maybe are using ankle weights for your prone leg lift. Short little break, resting in whatever position works for you. Grab a drink of water. Just promise me that whenever you stand up off the floor, that you immediately lift your knees 10 times before you move about. Otherwise, just stay down on the floor, okay? But if you're up and down and up and down and up and down, 
onto your feet. Really important to lift your knees five to 10 times as soon as you stand up. Okay, second set. Cradle your forehead. Imagine I've got ankle weights on and here we go. So with an ankle weight, you're gonna be able to come a bit higher. Okay, now you do not want your knee to be locked. You want to keep the knee somewhat soft because that is what changes the way you're using your hamstring so that the hamstring gets strengthened up to par so that you're able to put even more focus onto the glute. If you do this exercise and you feel it a lot in your hamstring, which is the back of your thigh, that's a sign that your hamstrings are really weak, okay? So what that means is you've just got to keep practicing this exercise so that that hamstring gets up to par so that then you'll be able to put more dedicated focus into the glute. Same thing on that other leg, 15 and 15, other leg, okay? Follow with me on that. So this exercise is both hamstrings and glutes, but once your hamstring is strong enough, the load, the focus, and the effort gets placed on the, on the glute, and that's where we want it. So when I first started doing this exercise, I didn't feel it in my glutes at all, which was why I created the Glutes Project Activate, by the way, okay? And this exercise is in Glutes Project Activate. If you don't have it, at some point later this year, I will give you an opportunity to get it for free. But um, it wasn't until I started practicing and really getting my glute function up that my hamstrings got up to par so that I'm better able to really, really, really focus on glute function and power and strength and all that good stuff. 15 and rest. Flipping over to come to glute bridge or hip thrust, whichever you prefer. Grabbing your heavier dumbbell. I'm gonna do a traditional bridge with you. So toes are turned open slightly, hands, feet should be about a few inches away from your fingertips if your fingertips are on the floor, okay? So heels are not all the way up here. You do wanna have a little bit of space. The idea is that at the top of the exercise here, you have about 90 degrees at your knees. Here we go. Tuck your pelvis, really squeeze your glutes at the top. This is an exercise that can really handle a heavier weight load. There are so many nuances to how to perform this exercise. And I know you might be like wondering all of the little nuances. For now, all I want you to focus on is pressing into your heels, keeping all of the focus and force in your heels, lifting your hips and tucking your pelvis under. If you start there, and you get your glutes firing, eventually down the road, I'm gonna be able to teach you more nuances to this exercise. For now, just press into the heels, raise the hips. If you feel some of this in your lower back, to some degree that's normal, as long as it's not creating pain, overt pain or overt discomfort. 15 reps. And when you're done, you're going to take a short break, unless you're doing three supersets, 15 reps, go for it. Let me show you the next two exercises. So we're moving into chest for this next superset. And then our final superset will be triceps. So we're going to be doing a superset, which is technically called a compound set because it's for the same muscle group. So we're going to be doing two exercises for the same muscle group, which is your chest. And we're going to stay on the floor. Let me show you these two exercises. You will want dumbbells, a set of heavier, and a set of lighter dumbbells. First set, we'll use your heavier dumbbells. We are doing, let me make sure that you can see me. We are going to do a basic dumbbell chest press, starting from here. Basic chest press is your first exercise. Second exercise, Almost everyone should be using a lighter dumbbell for the second exercise. For right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna show you with the same dumbbell, but when we actually do the workout, I'm gonna lighten it up. Palms face you, slight bend in the elbow, chest fly, okay? 
And while I could pro I, I could totally do it with these dumbbells, the truth is in order to get the most out of these two exercises, hear me loud and clear, in order to really do these two exercises right, you will need different dumbbell weights. If you can do this exercise with the same dumbbell weight, your chest press isn't heavy enough. Follow? So grab your heavier set of dumbbells. We're gonna do that first. Dumbbell chest press, knees are bent. If you've got an exercise bench at home, go ahead and use it. Arms start in the upward position. From here, push your shoulders to your hips, shoulders down and back, shoulders down and back, shoulders down and back like it's your full-time job. Anchor them down and from here, come out and press. Give me a pause at the bottom if your dumbbells are a little on the light side or if this exercise for whatever reason is a little easy for you, give me a little bit of a pause. Now, when you pause, you're not releasing the weight to the floor. You're just pausing. You're stopping and holding in position. You're not releasing tension. Hold the tension, even if the back of your arms are touching the floor. Follow me. Got it, okay. 15 with a little pause, two more-ish. And watch me. And dumbbells to your chest. Use your legs for momentum to kick you up. Dumbbells down, grab your lighter dumbbells. All right, and now if you can't, if, you're, if you don't have the right dumbbell sets for today, put it on your to-do list, okay? Um, buy yourself some new dumbbells. Invest in a second set of dumbbells for yourself so that you can get a better workout, okay? Lighter dumbbells for your second set. Arms start up over you, palms facing each other, slight bend in your elbows. Here we go. Shoulders draw towards each other at the bottom of the move. So right here, really suck your shoulder blades together, back and down, together, back and down, back and down, back and down, back and down, right? So if you do this exercise right, you will not be able to use the same weight load that you're able to do on your chest press. And if you're like, she doesn't know what she's talking about, I'm doing it with the same weight. That's because you're cheating yourself on your chest press or you're going too heavy here and your technique is not right. Because technically, if I was in the gym with you, you would not be able to do both exercises perfectly to capacity with the same load on your dumbbell. Okay, now if for whatever reason you just gotta use the same dumbbell for today, that's fine too, totally fine but just hear me out in terms of the theory behind what we're doing here. And dumbbells to your chest, use your legs for a bit of momentum, take them up and rest. Short little break before we do our second set. If anybody has a question about that long diatribe that I just shared with you, let me know. The truth is on your chest press, I want you to be upwards of at least 15 pounds or more. I want every woman in this group to be able to do a dumbbell chest press with 15 pounds. Eventually, not today, not next week, whenever the timing is right for you, but in your life, you should be able to do this with beautiful technique in 15 pounds. And very few women can do a chest fly with perfect technique safely at 15 pounds. It might be 12 pounds, it might be 10 pounds, but on your chest fly, really to do it right, there's not a lot of women that could do 15 pounds perfectly. And generally that's not my demographic. That would be someone who is like super buff, super fit, super, super, and who really knows the mechanics of the shoulders. Let's go second set, because chest fly is actually quite complicated um, in terms of the mechanics of the move. Okay, chest press. Grab yourself some heavier dumbbells if you have them. We start at the top, pressing your shoulders down to your waist and back to the floor. Pausing at the bottom and press. You can move faster or slower. You can do more reps or fewer. A lot of it has to do with that 20%. Remember, your job is to challenge yourself. Step up 20% more than you feel like it. 20% more than where you are today. 
So if today you feel good, it's 20% more than good. And if today you're feeling a little lousy for whatever reason, it's 20% more than lousy, okay? And that's because every day is a different day for the majority of women that I coach. It's just, we are up and down and in and out and all over the place. And that is normal for most women. 15 here. And when you're done, dumbbells to your chest. Use your legs to kick you up for a bit of momentum because then you're using the strength of your abdomen to come up and switch your dumbbells. You're also keeping your shoulders safe, palms facing each other, elbows bent. Here we go. Bring those shoulder blades to each other. Generally, what happens here when people use a, a, a dumbbell that's too heavy is the shoulder blades start to slide away from each other at the bottom here. So the telltale sign that you've got a good weight load is if you can lock your shoulder blades into place, sucking them together. Okay, so imagine you've got a pencil between your shoulder blades and you wanna hold that pencil in place here at the bottom. You wanna try to break that pencil in half with your shoulder blades at the bottom. And if you can do that, if it feels that way, your weight load on your dumbbells is probably right. A little bit of pause at the bottom. Again, even though you're pausing at the bottom, you're not releasing tension. The pause is to exaggerate your tension. And two more for 15. And rest if you're doing three sets. High five, hop to it. Let me show you the next two exercises for triceps. And I got a new tricep exercise for you guys today. So for those of you guys that are joining me for the first time, triceps and chest are really hard to do in this format of a workout. So there's only a few tricep exercises you can do, but I'm gonna show you guys one today that we've never done before. So before you come up off the ground, please join me. And if you're doing a third superset, please watch. Bring your feet together, tuck them under, sit back onto your feet. Rock back and forth about 10 times before we stand up. I want everybody practicing this every week because it's really important to keep or improve mobility of your toe joints, your feet, your arches, your ankles. If it's easy for you, we wanna keep it easy. And if it's hard for you, we wanna make you a little bit more mobile here. For those of you that are sticking around for the walking lunge workshop after this workout, this is also a great prep for our walking lunges. Then when you're ready, you're gonna stand up, but lift your knees 10 times immediately as you get into position and as you get ready for our next exercise, which is banded tricep extension. I will show you what it looks like. We've got two tricep exercises for this superset. Please keep lifting your knees or moving about. Watch me closely, hold on. Because a lot of people don't get this exercise right. Watch me closely here. Handled resistance band, okay, watch. Throw it out in front of you, okay? So the handle is out in front of you. Then you step on it with the handle coming back behind you, okay? Step on it. Then you're gonna bring the handle back behind you. I will show you my hand position in a minute. But from here, okay, let me reposition my camera. One of these days, guys, when I've got my new little studio office, we're gonna have a much better camera sitch. So you're stepping on it. The band is back behind you. And you're gonna hold your handle with both hands. Feet together, hold your handle with both hands, tricep extension up. Tricep extension up, keeping your elbows without moving. Elbows don't widen or narrow. Elbows stay in place, they just straighten and bend. Second tricep exercise, grab yourself light, no, grab yourself medium dumbbells, five to eight pound dumbbells. Second tricep exercise, arms are straight, uh, partial squat, palms facing each other. You're gonna kick back with both legs and come to here. Kick back with both legs, both arms. Oh my goodness, you guys. Um, I did not eat enough this morning. My blood sugar is totally dropping out. Okay, kick back with both arms, not your legs. And when you do that here, you also have to bring your chest forward. 
chest forward, okay? You're gonna feel some of this in your upper back as well as your triceps. So I like this exercise because it works the long head of the triceps, which is the tricep that gets a little jiggle jaggly right here, okay? So grab your handle resistance band. Lay it out in front of you. Step on it about halfway. The handle comes back behind. You're holding it with both hands. Knees together, feet together, knees soft, and extend. 15 reps, sending your hands straight up over your head. Knees are slightly bent to unlock your pelvis. That allows a natural curvature in your spine, and that allows your shoulders to get into position so that you can actually get the full value of this exercise. Okay. Elizabeth, keep your elbows a hair closer to each other at the bottom, just a little. Yep. Really good job, guys. Really, really, really good job. 15 reps, and then we're gonna go into those kickbacks. Grab your light to moderate dumbbells. Feet together, knees bent. Partial squat, kickback, okay? So it's a tricep kickback, but it's not a straighten and bend. I don't love that tricep exercise. I really don't love it. And this is just a bit more functional for the shoulders and the tricep, just a bit more. This is technically a physical therapy exercise right here. Normally we would do it one arm at a time in physical therapy, um, but if you've got a moderate weight dumbbell, and you really get that chest extension at the top here. Whew, I'm feeling my triceps and I only got, I only got five pound dumbbells, you guys. Holy moly, 15, okay? Wowza, do it right and you are gonna feel it. Short break before we go into our second set. Um, how was the quality of that first set on your tricep extension? If it was easy, you're not gonna step as far onto your band. Shorten up on your band so that there's more resistance, okay? Going into our second set after you take a short break, 20 seconds or so for a short break, fully step on your band, handle back behind you, feet together, knees bent, extend, so. Remember when you were little, we learned that song, and I'm not going to get it right, but it's like, you know, the knee bone connects to the shin bone, and the shin bone connects to the thigh bone, and the thigh bone connects to the whatever that song was, remember? So that's called your kinetic chain, and keeping your knees bent here actually means you're going to get a better tricep workout, and you might be like, how could that be? How could my knees influence my triceps? The reason is when your knees unlock, your pelvis unlocks, that unlocks your spine and that unlocks your shoulder girdle. And an unlocked shoulder girdle means that you're gonna use your triceps more effectively because the triceps insert, technically originate up in your shoulder joint. So knee soft here makes for a better tricep exercise. Super, super, super important. Grab your dumbbells for those kickbacks. Feet together, same thing. Knees bent, arms straight, kick it back. Your elbows do not have to be locked here. You wanna think about kicking your arms. It's almost like you're skiing, okay? But you wanna keep your chest up and you want to pronounce, have that be a little pronounced here. So it's as if the dumbbells press back while your chest simultaneously reaches forward. And if you do that, you are gonna feel this in your triceps. Holy cow. You're gonna feel that in your triceps like bonkers. And relax. Nice job, guys. Those of you guys doing three sets, keep it up. These look good. Elsa, those look really, really good. Good job. Great, guys. Robin Stevens, looks good. Looks good. I see you. Good job. Yep. Okay, nice job guys, let me 
check time. Where are we? Beautiful. So um, lots of comments coming in. I will check them after the workout just so I can stay focused on y'all here. All right. Let's take a short little cool down for those of you that aren't staying for walking lunges. Let's take a little cool down and I'll tell you about walking lunges. So let's come back to what we did at the beginning. Oh, it just feels so good. I'm gonna take you through just a couple of a glute stretch and a tricep stretch and a chest stretch because that's the workout that we did today. So that if you're not sticking around for walking lunges, you can now begin your lovely Saturday. It was such a joy having you here. I love, love, love you guys. I would be so lost without my Saturday glutey gang. I look forward to this all week long. And I just, I'm so happy you're here with me. I know it's good for you guys. And it's just so fun and so supportive. And so thank you for being here. And relax. Okay, hands up over your head. Interlock your fingers. Bring them back behind your head. Open your elbows back, lift your chest. Open your elbows back, lift your chest, look up. Little bit of a chest stretch here. And it also starts to give us a little bit of a tricep stretch. And then relax. Left arm up over your head, back behind to tap your shoulder blade. Right hand pulls into that stretch so that your hand goes a little lower down your back, okay? Just adding to that stretch. Also, deeply bending at the elbow, deeply bending at the elbow with your left arm, okay? Bend that elbow, use your right hand to just deepen that stretch and lengthen through the triceps. Same thing on the other side, right arm, bend deeply bend, deeply bend, and then use your left hand to add to it. Walk in your fingers, down your back, down your shoulder blade a little bit more, deeply bending, okay? It's almost like you contract here because that contraction is your biceps contracting. And when we contract our biceps, the opposite muscle group relaxes. It's called active isolated stretching. I taught it during the fireside stretch during the holidays of December. So when you contract your biceps, your triceps stretch. And so we're adding to that stretch. Glutes, find something for balance if you need it. Bring one knee up, okay? Then what you're gonna do is one hand at your knee, one hand below your knee, pull across your body. And if you need to use something for balance, you just use this for balance and pull your knee across your body. Use this for balance, using your opposite hand to pull your knee across your body. And if you can just do it standing, freestanding, hands are positioned like this, okay? Neither one, I mean, neither one is right or wrong. It's just whatever feels more effective for you. And relax, same thing on the other side. So you would hold here for balance and you'll pull across. And if you don't need to use balance, use that opposite hand to give you a little bit more of a twist across your body. It's just a little bit of a, a glute stretch and a hip stretch, just a little. And relax, keep moving. I'm gonna quickly go through questions super fast. I'm just gonna peruse through the questions super fast in the event that someone posted a question and they don't wanna stick for walking lunges, but we've got walking lunges up now. Next. And then um, let's see here. Okay, okay. Leela, flat bench, but you can do both. I'll come back and answer all questions completely at the end. Okay, great. Looks good. Okay, guys, we are going to jump into. Hi, Michelle. I see your sweet face. So fun. I love when you guys are brave enough to come on camera with me because. It's just so fun to be able to see you guys. No pressure for those of you that don't want, don't want to be on camera, but it's just so fun to see your faces. You know, I literally feel like you're here with me working out, which is so fun. Okay, walking lunges, walking lunges. Amber, you are so welcome. Okay, guys. So if you are new to the walking lunge workshop, here's how it goes. Body weight only. 20 steps to begin. Two sets of 20. Every weekend, we add 10 more steps, depending on where you are. 
I will not be adding 10 more steps right now. And that's just how it is. But it's really dependent on where you are and where you were last week. Walking lunges, you count your repetitions per each step. One step is one rep. And we're gonna do 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, wherever you are, start with your feet together. Knees are bent. Let's begin. You're gonna take a big step out, hand to the front knee, step together, squeeze your glute, other leg. Hand to the front knee, whoops, don't fall over. Step together, squeeze your glute, okay? Continue, please count your ears out. Here's one, squeeze the glute, two, squeeze the glute, three, squeeze the glute, follow me. Take your time. I'll be off camera for some of this so I can do it with you guys. These are intended to be done a little on the slow side. That is so that your body is able to um, recover in between each step. So it's so that you're moving slowly enough that your heart is able to circulate the blood through, bringing oxygen to the muscle so that the muscle is able to regenerate the fuel that allows it to contract. An easier way of saying that is going slower allows your body to recover step by step by step. And that's how we do a lot of these because you really should be able to feel like systemically, you could do it all day long. Your musculature should get tired, but your heart rate shouldn't get tired, right? So it should be kind of slow, methodical, meditative. You shouldn't be out of breath, really. You should be moving slow enough that you're able to stay with your breath. Staying with your breath, exhaling each step. I exhale on the lower. No, sorry. I inhale on the lower and I exhale on the stand. Inhale on the lower, exhale on the stand. Inhale. and take a short break. So I'm gonna be doing about 40 today-ish. Let me know where your numbers are, wherever you were last week. Your goal is to do 20 more. And if at any time you wanna hold at your current number, like I'm doing, that's totally fine too. Okay, you can always hold at your current number and then when you're ready, you continue the next week. So now on Saturdays, when we do these walking lunges, it's as a concentrated big set. During the week, you'll do one or two smaller sets to keep your body activated, to keep the movement in your body and to serve as repetition so that when we do them on Saturday, it's the day that you quote unquote overload your ability. So during the week you're doing maintenance, Saturdays we're overloading. Maintenance, overload, follow me. So on Tuesday or Thursday in this coming week, you'll do one or two sets of about half of what you do on Saturday. So if on Saturday you do two sets of 60, on Thursday, you'll do two sets, one or two sets of 30. Thursday, one or two sets of 30. Saturday, you would do 80. Next week, one or two sets of 40, one or two sets of 40, and then the next week, 80. That's the theory, but you always, eventually, just like I have lately, you hold in a holding pattern for a few weeks, and then you start advancing again. Inevitably in life, something is gonna cause you to be in a holding pattern, and that's totally normal. Let's go for our second set, knees are soft. 
taking a break in between your two sets whenever that break happens. I know that we're breaking at different times, but here we go. Let's do our second set. I will say these feel super good today. Very happy to report because I only did one, I probably did two days of maintenance this past week, but I only did one set for my maintenance. Um, and they were feeling real achy. Um, you know, just to give you guys a little bit of insight into how I personally navigate my own fitness. Um, this is, this winter has been rough for me. As some of you guys know, I spent 14 years in Los Angeles. And when the daylight hours changed here in Pennsylvania this year, and we got hit with snow in like October, it became a dark winter. And I got to tell you guys, I really took a hit from it. Um, I've just noticed much lower energy. I'm just tired. I'm more run down. My body really thrives on sunshine and we just really have not had it here. And uh, therefore I am being very gentle and um, supportive of my body this winter. And that means my workouts just have to be dialed back a little bit for right now. And that's the way that it goes. You're going to have great seasons of fitness. And then you're going to have seasons of fitness where you're just like WTF, where you're just like, what is going on? Right? And that's normal. It's, a, it's helpful to try and figure out why you're in the season that you're in. I know all the reasons why I'm in my season. It's important, but it's also just a function of recognizing it, acknowledging it, accepting it, and supporting your body through it in a productive way, okay? Your season could be injury. Your season could be heartbreak. Your season could be anything. You just really want to be supportive to your body while you're going through it. Okay, I got eight more steps for 40. How are you guys doing? Almost there. Squeeze those glutes when you step together. Use your breath, especially at the end. And that is it for me. That's about 40. So if I did eight times five is 40. High five, my friends. That is it. Big high five, high five. Tell me how it went for you. How are your lunges? Questions? Let's chat. Tell me what's up. Christina, 50. Good job. Robin, 125. Last week, 100. That's amazing. You are so welcome. So, 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 so welcome. Uh, Christina, good job. If you're just kind of coming back to your walking lunges and you're at 50, high five. As you guys know, I've said in the past, one set of 30 walking lunges is hard. It's hard. I remember when I was in my 20s, New York City, I was training Howard Stern and I was teaching him how to do walking lunges and squats. And I remember I could go into Central Park and I could run eight miles, but 30 walking lunges was like the death of me, body weight only. And I remember being like, WTF, what is going on? Why is this so hard? I can run eight miles, I can squat, but 30 walking lunges is so hard. It's just where I was, right? You know, it's just really and truly guys, like, it's just, it's just where you are. It's just for whatever reason. And I could go on and on and on about what the reasons are because there are scientific reasons. But the truth is, it's where I was for a number of reasons. And it took me years to really get good at walking lunges. Some of that is all of the nuances of your musculature have to get into symphony. Some of it is learning the technique. Some of it is getting your hamstrings and your glutes up to speed. But listen, wherever you are is where you are and celebrate it because a set of 30 is you are head and shoulders above the vast majority of the world out there who could never do 30, 30 walking lunges. So, okay. Good job. Linda Landry. 
Let's see. Two sets of 50. Woohoo. Good job. Good job. Good job. Leela, two sets of 60. Woohoo. Sarah Gillespie, two sets of 40. Woohoo. Joanne. Joanne, guys, is kicking our butt. She got 200 today. I am so proud of you. I'm going to catch up to you this summer. You just wait, guys. Summer, I'm going to catch back up. Um, Emmy, you are so welcome and you're not alone. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Okay, any questions? Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. I was amazed the walking lunches are so hard when I'm so fit. No, exactly. Kathy, yes, Kathy, it's true. It's like you might be super fit on the one hand, but your walking lunges are super, super challenging. That's squats for me. I can be super fit and squats are always the death of me. Squats are so hard for me now. Yana, two sets of 40, 10 better than last week. Good job. Really good job. Good job. You did 80 walking lunges. That's a big deal. Alexis Adams, it's been a long while since I joined you live. And I just want to thank you for your continuing to do these groups, group lifesaver workouts. I typically walk every Saturday morning with a group of friends, but today we push to do it later. And I'm happy to be here. I'm so glad you're here, Alexis. So glad you're here. Katrina, two sets of 30. I can't believe I'm doing walking lunges. <laughs> you're doing it. You're doing it. Here's the thing, if you um, give yourself permission, you guys, the truth is that most people can do a set of 20. It'll be uncomfortable, but most people can do a set of 20. You'll take your time, you know, but I'm gonna push you guys to do two sets of 20 because I know you're capable of it. It's just choosing to do it, okay? Any questions, questions, questions? Um, while I go through questions, guys, we are fully restocked on Women's Strength Nation tank tops in both white and black. If anybody wants a tank top, just simply go to my website, hollyperkins.com, go to the shop, and I've got lots of sizes in white and black now. If you have not gotten one yet, I don't know, I go back and forth. I think the white is my favorite. I'm kind of a white girl, but I do think the black one is a bit more flattering because it really shows off your shoulders and your back. But we have lots in stock. If you did not get one, it's not too late. Okay, any questions? Debbie, you are so welcome and thank you for that. So, so, so. Kathy Connors, you guys. Kathy just asked how the barn is coming. You guys, you guys. Okay, so listen to this. I'm gonna tell you guys real quick since you guys are here because you're my innermost circle. So the barn was supposed to get, the interior was supposed to get finished on Friday, yesterday. The guys didn't show up. And I knew it would happen because it's like this project just keeps getting delayed. You know, when there's something you want so bad and it's just like Newton's law, Murphy's law, Murphy's law, right? Anything that can go wrong goes wrong or whatever. So the guys didn't show up, which is totally fine. They'll show up on Monday or Tuesday. So the interior is going to get finished. So then yesterday's upset. I don't know if I can get Wi-Fi out there. So listen to this. I call Verizon. I call Verizon and I've been on the phone with them five times and they keep telling me no, that I can't get Wi-Fi. And I'm like, you don't understand. I have to have Wi-Fi out there. So I got on the phone, you guys, we're in really rural Pennsylvania and I'm considering digging my own fiber optic dedicated Wi-Fi line from the hub, which is three miles away. <laughs> we are considering installing. It's gonna cost me a fortune. I'm not even gonna tell you guys how much the fortune is, but a fortune. I might have to literally lay my own dedicated Wi-Fi line. Can you believe it? The benefit is I will have lightning fast Wi-Fi, which is the motivation to do it. So we're trying to make the decision what we're going to do. That all being said, in the meantime, I'm going to hobble through and figure it out. Hopefully it's possible that by next weekend, we might be in there for a workout because it's almost finished. So stay tuned. I, I just, I don't want to get too excited because it's just like one thing after another, after another, after another, but I'm like so excited about it, you guys. So stay tuned because if I can pull it together to the degree that I envision it, it's going to be so special. It's going to be the Women's Strength Nation headquarters. It's going to be so amazing and allow me to provide so much more valuable tutorials and workouts and content and 
exercise demonstrations. I'm going to be able to do so much more for you guys if we can make this thing happen. Um, but I'm holding my breath a little while longer. So please stay tuned and thank you for asking. Okay, Heidi, is it unproductive to do walking lunges with your arms out for balance? Not at all. Not at all. You use your arms for balance so that your body can learn it. Once your body learns it, you'll need your arms less for balance. And then eventually you'd be able to do them like this, right? If you wanted to, or like this, if you wanted to. But no, it's not unproductive at all. You always use your arms for balance, you guys, when you need to. Like a single leg deadlift, you might need your arms. A split squat, you might need your arms for balance. Your arms are gonna help you learn how to do it. Your arms are gonna help your body to learn how to balance. Okay. Robin, hope you, what about a satellite card for your phone and broadcast that to your computer? I don't know this. I'm going to look into this. What is this? So I know that I looked into like rural satellite service. The problem with typical, like, um, I think it's called HughesNet out here, typical rural satellite service out here. The problem is they only give you a certain amount of download. And because I do so much video uploading and downloading, I need a lot of whatever you call that. I don't know if you call that, um, I don't know what it is, but like I need to be able to upload and download a lot of data, I guess you would call it, right? And so I know HughesNet, it wasn't gonna happen, but I see your note, call Verizon about a satellite card. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Cause I'm literally like, I almost cried last night. I was like, what if I can't get Wi-Fi out there? And this morning my dad was like, we're gonna figure it out. He's like, we're gonna figure it out. And he's amazing. Like he can, yeah, we have some ideas. So we're gonna figure it out. But Robin, thank you for that because I'm gonna call Verizon. I'll call them on Monday and see what this means to have a satellite card. Thank you. Cause I, that's technology I'm unfamiliar with. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. If you build it, they will come from Kevin Costner baseball movie. This barn gym will grow and grow. Keep it up. Thank you, Debbie. It's true. If you build it, they will come. That's the idea. I've got to just keep telling myself that. Okay. Any questions? Let me go through here. Okay, good. Okay, good. Alexis, I saw yours. Leila. Okay, okay. Any questions, guys? Guys, good job. Diane did 50. Anne Marie, three sets. Good job. Michelle, happy new year. Kathy Connors, your example of squeeze the pencil between your shoulder blades for proper form on the fly was so great. Okay, good. I'm so glad. Okay, Robin, I don't feel that in triceps. I feel it on top of my shoulder. So you're probably talking about this extension exercise, right? Yeah. So that's normal because here's the deal, you guys, your triceps, a lot of people think of that as your tricep. That's one of your, that's the short head of your triceps, but your triceps actually insert all the way up here. And so that exercise, you are going to feel it a little bit more in the back of your, the back of your shoulder, because that is where the triceps um, technically originate, but you might think of it as an insertion. So that's where the triceps actually originate up here. So if you feel it sort of in this top quarter panel here, that's also accurate. And there's a lot of different kinds of tricep exercises. You know, like I said, it's just so hard to get a good tricep exercise during this workout. You can, if you want to supplement with some traditional kickbacks, you can. I just don't love them. You wanna make sure that you're also doing a straight arm kickback if you're gonna do a bent arm kickback, do them both, okay? Cause that's gonna help to get into your triceps more effectively. Leela, for the chest post fly. Oh, I answered that for you. You can do your chest press and fly on an incline or a flat, flat bench, either one. Um, but flat bench, you definitely wanna be doing it on a flat bench. And sometimes if you wanna do it on an incline bench, that's okay too. Ooh, Anne-Marie, keep us posted. Anne-Marie got her COVID vaccine, you guys. Um, let me know how you feel. I'm really, really curious. Okay, KC. You are so welcome, Yana. You're so welcome. Okay, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for being here. So fun. I will see you next Saturday for sure. And guys, in case you missed it, keep an eye on your um, 
on your email, Thursday is the final free special event as part of the holidays of September celebration on Thursday, I'm doing one final totally free training on how to build your own effective training program so that you can reach your specific goals without being confused and wondering if you're doing it right. That is on Thursday. I forget what time. I think it's at two in the afternoon. You do have to sign up for it. You can email me if you haven't gotten those details yet, but that will be Thursday. Also a heads up. If you're going to be there, make sure you, you show up five minutes early because it legitimately is limited to hundred people. Legitimately, really, and truly, I only have a hundred person um, account here on Zoom. And so only 100 people are going to be able to be there for that. And I've already got over 100 signed up. So just know that if you're going to be there on Thursday, get there five minutes early to make sure you get a spot. Okay, guys, happy Saturday. I will see you next week. I love you. I wish you health and good vibes for the week. I'll see you on Saturday. Bye, guys. Bye, Heidi. Thank you for being my counter. <laughs>